Welcome back to Smith Coding and Design. I hope everyone's having a good day, a good week, or a good weekend. So this week we are going to tackle Z-axis motor mounts that house a thrust bearing here in the center for a 3D printer. Uh, there is a set because the customer who asked me to create this, his printer utilizes two Z-axis stepper motors. So we'll go through the standard tutorial and sort of walk all the way through the cam. Please forgive any fingerprints you may see. Uh, the surface finishes came out absolutely beautiful. We utilize the Superfly for the top and bottom. What's also interesting is for the back side, when we go do the setup, we are actually going to go ahead and use a probing routine and path pilot to indicate our part in the center bottom for our second operation. So stay tuned for that. I hope everyone enjoys and I will see you throughout the tutorial series. Again, just look at these beautiful surface finishes. All right, guys, I will see you soon. All right, guys, here we are in Fusion 360. Here is our model. So we'll just briefly go over some of the aspects. It is 40 inches in width, 40 inches in length, and 16 inches high. We will be using a piece of stock that is two inches by two inches by one inch to make this part. So in the center, we have a pocket where our thrust bearing will sit. Our thrust bearing is 16 millimeters in diameter, and it will be attached to the Z-axis stepper motors via four M3 socket cap screws. So there are counter bores here for those screws. We'll be using a 1 8 inch end mill for the counter bores as well as the four pockets around each of the sides. So that's it for the front. There's also a quarter inch hole that we'll use a carbide drill where the shaft would come up through the part from the bottom side. So let's go to the bottom or the back side here. And all we really have on the back side is a pocket that would allow the mount to meet to the z-axis stepper motor you'll notice that all of the edges right now are sharp so what we'll do in cam is we'll go ahead and we'll chamfer around all of the edges by 15 thousandths and so that's it really for all the aspects of the part it's not too complicated and this will be a three axis tutorial this won't be done on the fourth axis Another interesting aspect here is I'll show a time lapse of a 3D printed version. So typically what I do is I 3D print my models first, at least if they're small. That way I can make sure that I have a rough idea that the geometry is correct. So I purchased a Bamboo X1 Carbon. I like the time lapses, so I want to show that off at the end here. And in this case, I did provide a STL file to the customer so he could print and try on his 3d printer before i actually machine the parts so thanks for tuning in please like and subscribe and again i'll see you throughout the tutorial here's a time lapse it's rather short because the part is small but i hope you found it interesting anyway and hopefully there will be more time lapses to come